Hi, this is Sarah from Maker Futures, and this is a tutorial video um, on how to get started on Tinkercad, specifically how to set up your class, um, how to give them access um, to that part of Tinkercad, uh, how to look at their work, um, all the wonderful stuff. Um, so I have made an account on Tinkercad and it's free. Um, as you can see, I've got some files that are, that are already in here. Um, so this is my home screen. Um, now Tinkercad is, is, or has come from a company called Autodesk. Autodesk are a huge computer aided design company, um, that kind of creatives use architects, um, engineers, you know, CAD designers, product designers. It is a huge professional piece of software um, that, that people pay a lot of money for. Um, so Autodesk produced this wonderful free educational piece of CAD software, um, which is a wonderful thing um, to use with your classes. Um, we will get on to uh, what is available to you in some other videos. Um, and this particular video is aimed um, just at teachers. Uh, the other videos will be aimed more kind of maybe at the children. So you can, you can show it in your class if you want to. Um, just to draw your attention very quickly to um, in our skills library, you will find this wonderful student workbook for mastering Tinkercad. Um, and it's free and you will also find the link um, to the book uh, for teachers as well. Uh, but that isn't free, I'm afraid. Uh, but this wonderful student workbook is, and it might actually just be enough um, for for you to actually use this as well it's really it's very helpful so it starts off by what is cad um it tells the students how to kind of um either create an account or join a class and we'll go through that in a second uh it gives lots of images it keeps the language quite simple and it shows or reminds you of what the mouse controls do so for me when teaching CAD, I have always used um, computer mice. Um, I find use you know working on CAD packages um, with a touchpad. I find it very difficult. Now that might be different for the children in your class because um, they are more used to touchpads and touch screens, whereas I prefer a computer mouse. Um, and it's up to you really about how you want to approach it. You might not be able to get hold of, you know, 30 computer mice. Um, so it's something to consider. And if you can get hold um, of the computer mice, I would do some training first. So I would open up um, a paint document and I would just get the children getting used to controlling the mouse um, and and actually, you know, clicking the right button, clicking the left button, cl clicking the scroll, um, because a lot of them haven't actually used them before. Um, but this um, this document is very very helpful and it talks you through um, the all of the essential skills that you need. Uh, and it's yeah, it's free. And you will also find the link to to download it yourself. Uh, but it's there for you to have a look at. Okay, back to my home screen. So made an account. Here we go. If I ever need to get back to this screen, the home screen, I click on the Tinkercad logo in the top left hand corner and it will take me back here. Tinkercad has three main functions. When it first came out, it only had 3D design. So, you know, drawing in a 3D world, drawing on a computer um, and now it has um, circuit design as well, circuit simulation, which is great for teaching electronics. Um, it can be used as um, kind of an introduction to electronics. It can be used a way of testing circuits out before replicating them in the real world and blowing up LEDs. 
you know, it can be used as a, an extension activity to electronics. Maybe you might not have components like breadboards. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, a wonderful thing to explore as well. Um, and lastly is something called code blocks. So this is drawing 3D models, but using code um, and dropping, dropping the code blocks in like Scratch, like um, Octo Studio. Um, and as you're dropping the blocks in, the 3D model is, is being created. Um, in the window next to the coding window. So it's, a, it's another approach to 3D modeling um, and all of them are fantastic. Um, okay, so let's look at setting up a class. So here we go. Um, I've, you know, created an account. Um, I might have had a play around with Tinkercad and there's other videos to show you how to look at those. I might have been through all the tutorials. Once again, there's another video to show you that. And now I'm ready to do something with my classes. So I'm going to set up my class. So I'm going to go over here on the left. I'm going to click classes um, and I'm going to click create new class. Um, just before I do that, I just want to draw your attention to the co-teaching tab. Um, this is wonderful. So once I've set up my class and my activity, my designs that I want to share with the children, um, you can also share it with other teachers, other members of staff. So if you've got a TA in your class, you can open up the group to them as well. And they can, they have the same kind of privileges as you. So they can change kind of um, templates or drawings and they can also monitor what the students are doing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create a new class. Uh, I did year four last time, so let's do year three this time. Uh, you've got to enter in what grade they're in or what ages they are. I don't know how old you are in year three. Are they six or seven? Maybe. Uh, select a subject. I don't like doing that. Let's just say design. So you can actually use Tinkercad um, in a whole, just in, in any subject, really. You can do wonderful things on this. I've seen people um designing theme parks i've seen people designing mountain ranges for geography drawing volcanoes for geography or science um designing animals after learning about animal classification um there's so many options it is a designing piece of software um, and there is also some simulation built into Tinkercad as well. And there will be a video on that. So you could, for example, um, create a marble run in this and you can actually run a marble around the marble run. Um, so there's there's a lot to this program. And what you what you will find is that there will be children in your class who just thrive on this and they will become little experts and they will probably become better than you on Tinkercad and they will hopefully you know be able to help um, any other students in the class that might just need that little bit of extra support um, they can you know log on at home um, and you can you can see the last time that they logged on so you can monitor that as well um while we're talking about monitoring uh make sure you've got the safe mode on here okay so it stops them accessing the public part of tinkercad so just make sure that is uh, ticked on there okay create class Right, so my classroom is empty at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna add some students. Now there's different ways to do this. Um, you can drag in a register list. So you can download it from Bromcom or Sims, whatever you use, um, you know, export it as an Excel document, and then you can paste it into Tinkercad and it will assign a seat, okay? Um, which is basically a space in the class. 
Um, or you can go through and add the names yourself. Um, okay, so for example, Robert. And what it does is it creates a nickname. Now, what you are eliminating by doing this, when students set up their own accounts, um, they've got to give themselves a nickname. Um, and actually assigning a nickname is really tricky because it won't just be kind of Robert One or something like that. Um, and so it's it's just a really kind of you're you're stopping the barriers and the difficulties happening later down kind of on later down the line by by setting up your class first okay so robert nickname robert save changes okay on to the next one maybe you've got another robert so maybe we're gonna write robert w okay and the nickname will be robert w um, okay, so I've now added two students. Obviously, you would go through and add um, your 30, however many students. Um, and then I'm going to go back to class. As you can see, we've got the safe mode on here. Okay, so I would have 30 students, even more or less sometimes and what you can do is you can get an invite and you can invite other teachers if we go back to students there um here is the class link so i can copy that class link and i can put that um kind of into an email if i want i'm not sure how you know my experience of uh, primary schools is that they don't really have um, emails they you know the children don't have emails access to emails obviously for understandable reasons um, but some schools have kind of Google Classroom and you can put that link in a Word document where the children can get access to it um, or you put that link on a PowerPoint slide and they can see the code here, okay? So there's two different ways for your classes to get access. They either are able to click on the link in some way via email, via Google Classrooms or whatever on a, you know, a Word document that they open on their own laptops or computers, or they search for Tinkercad and join the class and when they click on join class it will ask them to put this code in and they will need to know their nickname so if if you are keeping their nickname the same as what their actual name is it just makes life so much easier you say to the children your nickname is your name so where it prompts you to put a nickname in, you just put your name in, okay? Um, okay, so once you've got your class set up, um, you can actually share the link with them, share the class code with them, and you can um, share your activity with them as well. So activities allow you to share designs and lessons with your students without making those designs public. So what you can do is you can create your first activity. Um, so you can give it a little description if you want. OK, so maybe uh, animal designs and you can write something like, you know, using your knowledge of animal classification, you're going to design a brand new animal that could live in the rainforest um, and create activity. And then you would go into this and if you wanted to, you could provide a template, an example, which I, I would kind of persuade you not to because, um, you know, when you show students an example, you're, there's a very good chance you're going to get, you know, 20 of the same thing that, that you have done. So, you know, it's great building skills, but then allow children that freedom when it comes to the designing part themselves. Um, but if you give students access to this, they click on 
animal designs. Um, and it will hold uh, in the same place all of the students' work, okay? Um, right, so that is pretty much it. You can um, share designs with them as well that you have done. So you could have, you know, uh, some examples in here maybe, or some examples of maybe different shapes that they could use or you know, etc. Um, and you are able to monitor. Um, so when the students get access, they will click on their class and they will click on the activity and you will see the students work starting to appear in this window here. So you'll end up with 30 little tiles for each individual student um, and each one will be different because obviously they're, they're creating different um, designs. Um, so in terms of marking, that's great. In terms of monitoring progress, that's great. In terms of monitoring when they're going on it and how much work they're doing, all of that is great. Um, so that is how you share or set up a class, how you add students, how you can invite other members of staff, how you can share the link or share the class code, um, making sure that you understand that the children have to put in a nickname and when that is the same as their name, that makes life a lot easier making sure safe mode is on, being able to set up an activity and they click on that activity and all of the students' work are stored in that area for you to look at, to monitor. Um, and that is it. And remember that home button that's going to take you back, okay? Um, check out our other videos for getting started on Tinkercad um, and doing some little cool activities. And don't forget about this wonderful um, document here, uh, Mastering Tinkercad, the student version. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy.